Hello, I'm David Ruffin, Principal of IntelliCredit, and uh, I want to thank um, and welcome each of you on the webinar today for contributing your valuable time away from your day-to-day -day duties. Speaking of which is exactly the point Larry and I want to make today, and that is our new IntelliCredit solution, combining portfolio analyzer and smart loan review tools, save each of you credit and management professionals valuable time often committed to an onerous data gathering exercise or perhaps an intrusive loan review engagement. And we want to show you today the value proposition of, as one of our satisfied clients said, uh, leaving you time to do your day job. We are excited today to show you what we believe to be game changers for community bankers in both credit intelligence and loan review. Let's see. And we certainly thank the ICBA for sponsorship of today's webinar. We're very proud and honored to have been selected in March as one of the most recent ICBA preferred service providers. We also appreciate Kevin Tweddle's statement affirming IntelliCredit's efficiencies, which I frankly think along with credit quality, arguably it remains front and center for all community bankers today to be concerned with, which is efficiency. And being, of course, the newest division of the quick rate family of products and services, and I might add a long time uh, and enthusiastic supporter of all things ICBA and keeping up our prior tradition, IntelliCredit provides the most practical and affordable credit risk related solutions in the marketplace for community bankers today. Your presenters today will be myself, uh, David Ruffin, and Larry Poole. Larry and I have spent a lot of combined years in the credit world. And though we're now providing uh, products and services, we've been where you are, either as lenders, risk, review, or credit officers. And hopefully in that sense, uh, what we share with you today resonates. And I might add, strikes you as, as innovative and as with as much ease of use as we hope to develop for ourselves and for those who use IntelliCredit for portfolio analytics and for reviewing credits. Again, through our forming the IntelliCredit division under the aegis of the quick rate family of products and services for community banks, we've continued to keep uh, practicality and affordability uh, front and center uh, for ICBA member banks. But quick rate gave us the resources to develop something revolutionary. Pairing a portfolio diagnostic tool with a loan review application on the same platform and interacting with each other in ways that we'll demonstrate for you in a moment. There are other analytical report writing tools, and there are even a few loan review software applications out there, but none combined on one platform interactive with each other. And I think, again, it's important to remember while this is state of the art fintech, as they say in today, world, it's fully developed and nurtured by credit experts who've walked in your shoes. So we'll be showing you today our cloud-based IntelliCredit portal, which is comprised of the Portfolio Analyzer and the Smart Loan Review um, solutions. The primary energy source is the regulatory flat file or core system loan extract. We do the heavy lifting and mapping uh, for, of the data and therefore subsequent downloads or virtual push button. We're talking about just days to get you up and running. The application rests on Amazon Web Services and is SOC 2 compliant. It's designed for both internal and external loan review uses as, for, as being also a repository for performing annual reviews on borrowers. It is perfectly adaptable for third-party uh, vendors performing their own versions of credit file reviews, and hopefully you would see as an added validation of its efficiencies, as many as five other loan review vendors are currently looking at the IntelliCredit solution for use in their own loan review processes. And of course, given our deep loan review experience and credit uh, experience, uh, we certainly do provide smart loan review as a third-party service. Uh, if indeed requested. So let me briefly describe a little bit of our approach at IntelliCredit uh, and how we've developed Portfolio Analyzer and Smart Loan Review. Our goal all along has been to merge macro and aggregate 
data with transactional borrower credit risk. While we may get red flags from public data, such as what our sister division, Quick Analytics, is an expert at, remember our energy source, if you will, is non-public, idiosyncratic loan portfolio data, uh, not usually seen by outside stakeholders like investors or peers. Even regulators uh, tend only to see this perspective uh, during active examinations. We use the drill down or peel the onion metaphor, which is more apt, to better understand acknowledged and emerging credit risk. And, and here I think the revolutionary pairing of the smart loan review. Um, apart, they may not necessarily be that groundbreaking, but we think together they make each other much more effective tools. The portfolio analyzer now has the full drill down concept fully complete with the most troubling macro trend down to the most minor technical loan review exception linked. For smart loan review, it now has the ability to determine a more informed target of loans and borrowers uh, for reviews. So the game changing revolution begins with the portfolio analyzer. It is designed practically um, for even C-suite bankers to use and analyze their loan portfolios, critically important here without having to be an Excel power user or even to delegate uh, to data engineers. And unlike most vendors in this space, there's not a, there's but a single enterprise fee and unlimited, and, and unlimited use by bankers, whomever you designate uh, on your team to have access. This is where it begins with the portfolio analyzer. And in the COVID and post COVID world, we think it gives a bank the ability to solve what I believe is perhaps the most vexing legacy of COVID to bankers. And that is identifying the various and diverse pockets of risk spread through the loan portfolio. You know, unlike the last financial crisis we had to endure a decade or more ago, where arguably one industry, all things wonderful family housing, kind of took the economy and our industry into a ditch. Uh, we've now been uh, left with a, a, a much more uh, complex task of ferreting out the various subsets of portfolios giving us potential concern. Particularly uh, given the current level of unprecedented credit quality uncertainty in bank loan, loan portfolios, I think the portfolio analyzer performs three primary tasks. It quantifies emerging credit risk by tying macro and aggregate trends to transactional borrowers, prompting those trends. Secondly, it allows um, a user to drill down to industry or borrower hotspots, again, a far more daunting task uh, due to COVID. You know, I do think it's quite important in the next two to three years to be able to uh, look at our portfolios as a sum of many parts. I think it is a trap to be focus totally on the portfolio performance in aggregate, because underlying uh, the aggregate performance, there may be whole areas of, of concern uh, that frankly began with the COVID environment. And remember, uh, what we've been left with is our borrowers at community banks are largely residing on Main Street, not Wall Street. And Main Street, in many cases, remains in recession. And Main Street remains, in, any, in many cases, still in survival mode of trying to, to endure this pandemic. And I think this tool is certainly uh, ideal for, for giving you that insight. But third, as has already been alluded to, it gives you the ability um, as a user to create your own standard or customized reports or one-off analyses, uh, and particularly without having to be, as I said, a Power Excel user or have to engage a data engineer uh, to delegate those tasks to. In a moment, Larry will show you exactly how we've removed these intermediate steps, uh, making, uh, again, anyone in the C-suite uh, capable of, of utilizing this tool. We get some of our greatest uh, uh, compliments, frankly, from uh, CEOs and, and chief financial officers that are, being, are able to, to look at and take perspective of their portfolios without having to necessarily delegate it uh, to another so-called expert. And we think that is indeed a key part of the huge investment in the ease of use and in the efficiency. So tying it to smart loan review, 
um, this is the other half of, of the solution. And I think certainly given the fiduciary and regulatory nature of your business, uh, you're almost forever pummeled by outsiders peering into your work and second guessing your decisions. Uh, another metaphor might be, oh goodness, here's another audit or another trip to the dentist coming along with a loan of you. Um, typical reviews are highly intrusive and create time sinks um, for internal staffs. And in kind of the category of a picture's worth a thousand words category, the typical loan review process might conjure up this maddening visual with continuous meetings, intrusions, interruptions, and often trading stacks of paper. Part of the time sink uh, in this often lack of transparency between reviewers and staff leading to a bit of the blind leading the blind, as it were. Uh, everyone uh, is on um, is, is not aware, not necessarily aware of credits uh, other than through time consuming meetings or exchange of documents as to what is emerging out of the loan review process. Uh, all of this is kind of a point in time engagement that reasonably uh, quickly becomes uh, drawing dust on some shelf of re relevancy once concluded. So IntelliBredit Smart Loan Review, why is it different? Voila, this is again a revolutionary approach, we think, for um, to, to the taxing traditional loan review process. Far more efficient, far more transparent, far more informative process with our Smart Loan Review solution. Um, and what we think important to you, efficiencies leading to more affordable loan reviews. Uh, in a moment, Larry will demonstrate exactly how these revolutionary <coughs> innovations can benefit you. <clears throat> so for all of the attributes of the portfolio analyzer, uh, the companion smart loan review becomes that much more effective and risk informed. Smart loan review samples are better informed by portfolio diagnostics, but what every client is raving about is its ease of use, efficiencies, and minimal intrusiveness. The phrase we often use is real-time applied to production, exception, clearing, and reports. In other words, providing a less structured process to get through a review engagement. Uh, use of the real term or the, the real-time IntelliCredit portal allowed one chief credit officer to boast, this process allows me to do my day job and still produces all the quality substance you need. I do want to disabuse you at this point, however, of any fear you might have that efficiency in this case is in any way a euphemism for superficiality. Remember, we built this as credit guys, and certain substantive corners can never be cut or sacrificed in that sense just for the ease of use. As Larry will soon show you, the application is designed for a, with a wealth of credit risk descriptive options, including borrower appropriate financial spreads. Again, our biggest goal here was to bring a process, loan review, in from the cold, arguably a model that other than with word processing and spreadsheet technology improvements over the years, hasn't changed, frankly, since regulators first required independent loan review of commercial credits in 1990. Loan review is often perceived as a one-off, point-in-time engagement, relevant only for a brief time, drawing dust, and certainly not living beside ongoing portfolio analytics. We think through placing smart loan review as a companion to portfolio analyzer, we've changed that paradigm. So as you view the demonstration with Larry coming up, keep in mind the four key attributes each of the portfolio analyzer, which would be identifying your emerging credit risk, you're subsetting the portfolio into hotspots, you're creating your own reports, and, you're, and then you're bringing, bridging loan and annual reviews. And the four key attributes that we'll show you in the demo on smart loan review, automating your sample selection process, uh, the whole environment of online loan review, and the real-time exception monitoring and clearing, and just the fluid project visibility and reporting that has led to so much uh, accolades in terms of people uh, in your shoes uh, enjoying uh, this new approach uh, to loan review. So Larry, at this point, I will hand it over to you, and if you will give uh, the audience uh, a, a taste of what both portfolio and smart loan review look like. 
Hey, thanks everyone for your time today. Um, we're going to take about probably 30 to 35 minutes and walk you through the application. So, um, as David said, this is a web based application. How it works is uh, if you sign up as a client, either um, if we're doing this as a loan review as a third party service, or maybe you're using this for um, internal loan review or for annual reviews, or you're just using the portfolio analytics um, portion of the application. Um, everything is, app, is accessed through the, the same web-based portal. Um, you log in with your email address, you send an authentication code, and once you enter that authentication code, um, this is the landing page. Now, I do want to talk through Portfolio Analyzer. And when I say Portfolio Analyzer, I want you to think of a, a portfolio management tool. Um, and also, we'll talk through Smart Loan Review, how the, the loan review process is managed and enhanced. But before we do that, let me just give you a little bit of context of how this application is set up and how it works. So as David said, um, our essentially, um, our application runs on your financial institution's core system file. Uh, we try to get the regulatory alert file, sometimes called that um, ILDR file. That's the, the standard um, 82 field file that regulators, here's the, the field listing, are requesting when they come in to do exam period. This is our starting spot, but as long as you can give us a core system file with, uh, with a uniform um, format, we can ingest it to our software. So you're looking at our, our uh, fictitious financial institution, Pawnee Community Bank. Um, I have ingested six quarterly core system files for Pawnee into this application. Uh, we recommend that you give us those core system files on e at each month end, just because it creates for uh, such uh, robust analytics. Um, over to the right side of the application is what we call our standard report section, which I'll show to you. These just give you whether you are um, a power analyst and feel completely comfortable banging out of models in Excel and access all day, or whether you are a very novice user who, who you are just comfortable with point and click, you're going to be able to use these standard reports. We also pr provide you the ability in this section to do some custom reports, which I'll also show you through some advanced querying and pivot tables, which are, which are built on top of our application. Um, just to give you some context, I'm going to make the screen just a little bit bigger here. Um, the way that this works, every chart, table, or graph that you see is interactive and you can drill down. So for instance, for this bank, we've uploaded the most recent core system file is uh, 6-30-2020. Um, right here in the middle of the page, you'll see some kind of analytics about the portfolio, 816 loans, 340 million roughly in balances. You can see some information on risk grades, some information on past due. But if you want to find, say, in this cell right here, some more information on these loans that are 30 days past due, you can see there's 9.2 million in balances. I can just click on this cell and drill down. And what it's going to do, it's going to recall the 19 loans that are 30 days past due that make up the $9.2 million in balances. So here's a list of those 19 loans. Um, we provided what we think are some of the most critical um, pieces or fields from your core system file, those being borrower name, loan officer, note number, balance and exposure, interest rate, FFIC product type code, the loan's risk grade, days past due, origination and maturity. You can see whether the loan is non accrual. We've got delinquency counters and then date of last loan review, which I'll describe here momentarily. Um, each of these fields, if there's other fields in the core system file that you would want to see in the drill down tables, they can be customized not only for your institution, but for your user profile as well. Um, all of these, these uh, tables that you see are sortable. So if we, um, for instance, this is my 30 days past due long, but if I want to sort these in ascending order by risk grade, um, I can just click on the cell header and it'll sort in, in whatever order um, I, I choose. So for example, this is Pawnee Community Bank. They're on a um, one to, to eight risk grade scale with risk grades one through four being passed and five through, through eight being the regulatory definitions of non-passed. 
So immediately from this drill down, I can see the question I would ask as a, a member of the credit department is why do we have roughly eight loans that are all greater than 30 days past due that are carrying past risk rates? Um, again, every chart table and graph is interactive. So uh, this is a, a chart at the bottom on the landing page that's just showing the distribution of the portfolio by risk grade cohorts. Over the last um, six quarters, we could we could change up the time series if we wanted to, but let's say that you just want to see criticized and classified loans. I'm going to deselect on my legend, my past risk grades and my weak past risk grades. And again, here is a kind of uh, just a view over the last five quarter of my non past loans. So just wanted to give you a little bit of context on how the application works again. Everything's interactive and you can drill down to, to gain more information on those subsets. So now let's talk through what are some of the key efficiencies and some of the, the, um, the key takeaway points for these applications. One, Portfolio Analyzer, as David said, really allows you to identify emerging credit risk. Um, this is the one identifying emerging credit risk where essentially every table and every graph within the portfolio can do that. And we're not gonna go through each of them, but let me just give you kind of a couple areas. So I'm gonna go over here to one of our standard charts called our risk grade distribution chart. Um, this right here is showing a distribution of the portfolio by risk grade and FFIC code. So you can see, um, for instance, if I wanted to see my $930,000 in balances within my, one to four family construction loan category, um, I could easily drill down and see what those loans are. Um, but the chart at the bottom is the one that I want to focus on first. Um, this application allows you to actually compare different flat files. So let's say that I wanted to take my first quarter 2020 core system file and compare it to a, a core system file perhaps six months prior. So what you're seeing right here, this uh, is a distribution curve. This bl black line represents um, the percentages of balances in the portfolio by risk grade. So you can see most of the balances were risk graded three, which is a satisfactory rating as of uh, 331 2020. For the month prior or the six months prior, the 930 2019 core system files represented by this orange line. If I'm looking at this, I really don't see too much risk grade differentiation for the portfolio as a whole. But what if I, let's say, compared and wanted to see how is that, does that same hold true for maybe my one to four residential construction loans? Now, I've uh, gone from the portfolio level and just chose one to four family residential construction loan. Here, there's been a clear divergence. So if I look at the orange line, which is the 930 core system file, the residential loans, most of them were risk graded three. If I look six months later, most of those loans are now risk graded four. So again, a risk grade three and a risk grade four at this bank are both past credit. So this type of migration is not going to appear on any report because these these credits are not um, are not criticized or classified. They're they're both past rated but somebody at the bank has made a conscious decision to downgrade this segment of loans. Again, if I wanted to drill down and see these loans, um, only two loans within this category, so that answers my question. Probably just the law of large numbers. I'm guessing that this one credit right here, which was a million dollars, was probably downgraded at some point over the last six months. But the point remains that you can really grab different subsets of your cap portfolio. Maybe you want to look at all residential loans. Again, not a lot of migration within my residential loan portfolio, but it just allows you to delve quickly into subsets of your portfolio. Now, speaking of subsetting, another thing that we said is, is the portfolio analyzer allows you to do exactly that. Um, as David alluded to, COVID has really left us with the idea of um, not just finding hot spots of credit risk within your portfolio, but sometimes those hot spots can be within very similar categories. For instance, some restaurants um, during COVID have suffered greatly, while others that have maybe the model of a Jimmy John's are probably doing gangbusters during the last year for their delivery model. So it's up to us as bank professionals to say, how do we, how do we um, identify those, those kind of hot pockets? So 
Um, we have instituted this concept of what we call loan tags. If there are certain subsets within your portfolio that you want to tag, um, you can do that and then apply kind of all of these metrics to those specific subsets. So, for instance, again, if I'm looking at the home page, there's 816 loans within this portfolio. If I wanted to see just my COVID effective loan, out of those 816 loans, I've got 143 COVID loans, roughly 70 million in balances um, that have had historical COVID modifications. Again, I can drill down and see those list of loans that make up my COVID effective loans. Um, another thing that we're left with is many financial institutions have PPP loans within their portfolio. And because those are a specific type of, of credit instrument with a 1% interest rate, we're seeing a lot of banks come to us and say, do you have ways to evaluate our portfolio net of our PPP loans? And the answer to that would be yes as well. I can tag all the PPP loans, I can exclude those, and then you can do all of your analysis on your portfolio net of any, any, any PPP loans. Um, as again, again, as I said, each of these charts, tables, and graphs give you the ability to, to export them to Excel and create your reports. Um, there's various ways of viewing them. All of our charts, tables, and graphs typically fall to the FFIC view, but you could view your portfolio by loan officer. You could view your portfolio by perhaps loan vintages or year of origination. Maybe you want to look at it if you're tracking credit score by credit score cohorts. So all of these standard reports really give you some dynamic reporting capability. But then we also offer you the ability to create your reports in a very customized way. And that's what these two sections down here are, the custom queries and the pivot tables. So let me just show you this really quickly. Um, let's assume that your bank each month, a um, report is circulated to the, to the management team and the board listing um, all loans that are non-pass over $250,000. Typically, at your, your financial institution, um, that report is run in one of two ways. You download the core system file, you have an analyst who prepares that report, and then the report is circulated, or you rely on somebody who knows how to operate and query on your, um, your bank's core system. They provide the report to the management team. Um, we want to be able to, uh, regardless of your skill level, to be able to give you the ability to quickly create reports. So, in this example, let's let's create this report. Let's look at, we want to filter and um, grab all loans over $250,000 with a risk rate of non-pass. So all that I'm going to do to create this report, I'm clicking the filter. Here's my list of the 82 fields that typically come with that core system file. I'm just going to say I want all risk grades that are one of and I'm going to select the risk grades that I want, special mention, substandard, doubtful, and loss. So there's 16 loans within the 630-2020 corporate system file that are non-path. My second condition, I want all loans with balances that are greater than 250000 So when I add that second condition, there's now 13 loans that meet those two conditions. Um, I can save this and let's just call it our non-pass report greater than 250,000. I can make this query private, meaning it's only accessible to me. I can make it shared, meaning anyone at my bank can see it. But once I save this query, now I can apply this query to any data set date that I choose. So um, right now we're looking at the 6-30-2020 data set date, but I can apply this query to to a different data set date. So at fiscal year end 2019, there were five loans that met these conditions. Um, we also give you the ability, if you wanted to turn this into a report, maybe you're looking at this and thinking, that's great, but I don't, these, a lot of these fields don't mean anything to me. We would like the ability to, to type some commentary in there. We've given you the ability to do that through this select columns feature. So maybe note purpose is important at your bank. So I'm gonna add note purpose. We've got a custom field called the comments field. Um, maybe you want the note number to appear before the borrower name and you're not interested in loan officer. I'm gonna apply these. Um, here's the template that I've just set up that maybe feels more native to your bank. You also have the ability um, 
through this template and let me say let me save this change data set date um, you can create notes so maybe you wanted to on this note make the note that the loan is in foreclosure <clears throat> So this is a little kind of custom report that we've created. And now as we change data set dates, um, any notes that have been made in the report um, are retained, but the balances and the other characteristics are updated based on the, the creation of, or based on the data set date. So this is like one kind of uh, loan level report that you can create. We also, um, and once you save that, it's conveniently located in this little list here so you can always get back to it. Um, for more kind of power users, we've also added this concept of pivot tables. So this is where you can really create some powerful aggregation reports on, on your bank's data. So I'm going to do this really quickly. Let's say that we wanted to look at um, all loans by FFIC code. I want to look at the note counts for FFIC codes. And maybe let's look at the balances. And um, Let's even compare multiple data set dates. And even let's add a filter for maybe risk grades. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to add a couple of uh, period ends. Let's add four period ends. So now I've got four quarters. Uh, I'm going to get rid of my totals over here. I don't want to see grand totals. Um, what, what I'm showing here, this is by FFIC product type code, which is over here on the left. You can see the note counts and the balances across four quarters, four quarters for comparison. You also have the ability to format this report however you would like. So let's say that we don't want any decimal places. I'm going to get rid of decimals on our balances. And let's say we want the note counts to um, be centered. Again, this could be saved, this template could be saved, and as more quarters are added, you would auto automatically have this template saved. We're essentially data warehousing the core system files within the application, and you can easily access those files to create customer reports as you see fit. Uh, let's take it a step further because I did add this risk grade. Let's look at um, only the non-pass grades. So for this bank, five and six, five is special mention, six is substandard. Um, this is now a report showing my non-pass grades, both counts and balances, over the last four quarters by FFIC codes. Um, having been a loan officer, having been a data analyst at a bank even before that, um, pulling this right here, this one chart across four quarters, would be a lot more Herculean effort in my historical community bank than it really should be. But you can see now we were able to do that in a matter of 30 or 40 seconds. So that's really how um, two examples of how you can create some custom reports. Um, another thing that we think this portfolio analyzer application adds is the ability to um, bridge the gap between loan reviews and annual reviews. Um, so this is an analytics application, but we really want to bring loan review out of the wilderness. So let me let me show you an example here. Let's say that I'm I'm in um, the portfolio analyzer and I'm looking around. Um, let's say that I'm I'm looking at um, my credit scores for my portfolio. So um, I'm looking at various credit scores, and I only want to see credit scores within my portfolio that are less than 620. So I'm going to deselect these items in the legend. Um, it looks like I've got about $2,500,000 in balances with credit scores of less than 540. Let's drill down and look at this loan subset. Um, don't see anything there. Uh, here's an example. I've drilled down. I've got 12 loans that are in that 580 to 619 range. Um, over here in this far right column is what we call date of last loan review. If we do this as a service for you or if you're using this internally for your loan review application or even to do annual reviews, any annual review that you do that is related to a note number will pull or, or loan review that is related to a note number will pull into this application. So 
Terry Naylor, who has a 607 credit score, I can see that a loan review was done on her in, in January of 2020. If I want to see that loan review report, I can just click on this hyperlink and it's going to actually pull up the loan review write-up for Terry Naylor. Um, so here's an example. Terry Naylor was part of this TELUS relationship. So um, TELUS ID is the, the main borrower. You can see that Terry Naylor gives you, uh, you can see information on her background, the primary and secondary sources of repayment being um, cash flow, collateral, and guarantor capacity. Within the loan review write-ups, you have a, an, a, um, a place where you can determine what is the, are you concurring with this risk grade? Are you recommending a downgrade or upgrade? As part of our write-ups, we have a table that show you what was the beginning risk grade, what was the recommended risk grade. Um, our write-ups also include an additional addition to opining on risk grades for credit. We opine on um, two other things, one being um, the borrower underwriting rating, so at origination, how was writing, underwriting, was it satisfactory, were there any weaknesses? We opine on credit servicing, so post-booking, how is the, the bank or your financial institution done at, at following up and tracking loan documents? Um, there are information, these uh, bullet points just come from the regulatory alert file. We provide a write-up and discussion on any repayment terms and collateral description. And then finally, for each um, type of credit, so this is a commercial real estate loan, we're gonna capture various credit data points. So this is a commercial real estate loan, so we're interested in things such as LTV, property status, construction status. If we were reviewing, let's say, a hotel loan, the data points would be much different. You would see um, characteristics such as, is this loan flat, or is this hotel flag? What is the average daily rate? What was last year's occupancy? But the main takeaway here is again, if you're ever within the, the portfolio analyzer application and you see that a loan has been reviewed, whether it was a loan review done internally or externally or annual review, you could click on the hyperlink and pull up the report to see what did the review team have to say about that loan. Um, so that is uh, in a nutshell, portfolio analyzer. Um, also wanted to now switch from portfolio analyzer and talk a little bit more about our smart loan review process. So one of the greatest compliments that we've gotten from credit teams at the bank is we've really improved their just efficiency um, with the ease of use of this web-based portal. Now again, um, we do this, if IntelliCredit does this as a loan review service, you're still gonna have access to this portal to access reports and see exceptions and those sorts of things or if you're doing this internally for internal loan review, you're still gonna gain those efficiencies. So one of the things that I wanna talk about is um, that we always try to do is how can we use the portfolio analyzer to really pick a risk-based sample? Uh, one of the things that I find myself doing constantly now when I'm picking a sample is going to this top borrowers and concentration report. Um, we're finding that a lot of the banks now are starting to track NASIC's industry codes. So what I typically do when I'm picking a sample to, to select an automated smart sample, I'm gonna go to this top bars and concentrations report. I'm gonna look at NASIC's industry codes. Um, this is showing me my top 10 NASIC's industry codes at this, um, at this bank. Maybe you wanna see the top, let's say 15 industries. Um, another thing that I've already shown, I like to look at by industry, what loans have been affected by COVID. So I'm gonna add this COVID loan tag. And here's the industries at this bank, 143 loans and how they're divvied up by industry. So um, just looking across this chart, going down the list, probably the one that jumps out immediately is hotel loan. I have seven hotel loans with $4.3 million in balances. If I drill down, um, I immediately see that I've got five loans to the Sunshine Hospitality with roughly, what's that, three million in balances. Um, these, all, these loans all carry a risk grade four, so that's passed at this institution. They're all showing 16 days past due. They all originated about a year ago, and they all show some historical delinquencies. Now again, this would be 100% one loan 
or one set of loans that I would add to my loan review sample because they're not going to appear on any sort of report. These are past credits that are not 30 days past due, but I know that they've been affected by COVID. They've had COVID modifications. They're only a year old. They show some historical delinquencies. So this is one of many examples of how I would use the analyzer tool to help inform and automatically select my, my loan sample. So now let's now let's pivot pivot over and assume that we have selected a loan sample and that the loan review is underway. Um, I'm going to talk from the perspective a little bit right now of of IntelliCredit completing your third party loan review, but all of the all of what I'm saying would still work if you're doing this internally. So um, I'm going to go to our what's called the loan review summary page. Um, this is a page that um, if you are a chief credit officer of, of a bank, that you would at any point in time be able to view the smart loan review dashboard and you can easily um, see an area that, that chronicles the number of loan reviews that have been done and the penetration of the loan reviews. So in this example for Pawnee Community Financial, there's only one loan review environment. 42 loans out of uh, the 765 loans in the sample. That represents about a 5% penetration from a loan count perspective. It represents about a 10% penetration from a balance perspective. But, and then in this chart below, um, we will, you'll be able to see how many loans within our portfolio have been reviewed in the last 18 months. One of the things that we've been hearing more from, from regulators is exactly that. How many of your loans have been reviewed either by loan review or annual review over the last one year to two year. And in this uh, smart loan review dashboard, we, we easily uh, quantify that for you. So you can have that answer in your back pocket to your regulators. They really like seeing this. Um, to show you um, during a little bit of what the loan review process looks like, we manage the loan review pro process typically um, through two, two things, what we call the reporting portal and then what we call the exceptions portal. So I'm going to go to the reporting portal first. Um, you as a chief credit officer or a member of the credit function of your bank, you will be able to log in at any time and just see the, the visibility of where we are in the loan review process. This is an example of a loan review that's just started. So again, it's a small 42 note sample. You can see IntelliCredit has completed nine of those reviews and there's 33 loans left to be reviewed. If you wanted to see the loans that have been reviewed, all you would have to do is go up here to this uh, tab that says Individual Loan Review Reports and you can click on this. Again, um, our process is we are not giving you work at the end of the day and then discussing. As we publish work to this portal, you can log on in real time and see what has been completed and review that at your leisure and in a time frame that suits your schedule. Um, what we're looking at right now is a list of the nine loans that have been completed. So this is what we call our summary grid. This is a summary grid of the nine loans that have been completed. Um, just to show you, I can select all these loans if I wanted to print this. We try to provide this completely in the cloud, but also recognize that that a lot of banks like paper files to share among the group. Um, I'm just going to print out this summary grid. I want to show you what our some of our reporting looks like. Um, let me click on this PDF report. So here's here's our loan review summary report just for the nine loans that have been completed. Um, again, if you wanted to see more in depth of what we had to say, maybe about Annie and Associates, you could click on the borrower's name and it's going to pull up the full write up that we went through. Uh, a few minutes ago. We also recognize that, that one of um, the key things of, of loan review is um, risk grade changes. So we also categorize any credits that we are recommending for grade changes on what we call this risk grade changes tab. This is a big time saver because when we're scheduling meetings with the bank every day, you're not waiting for our work to see what loans we have recommended changes for where you're going to see those published in the portal. And when I'm conducting loan reviews today, I would say 90% of my time is spent in discussions with the bank on this tab right here. Um, if we're concurring with risk grades, the chief credit officer, maybe he or she doesn't care too much, but if we're recommending grade changes, 
um, he or she can quickly see what those changes are and it gives them a, a heads up of, of what will be discussed that day. Um, at the conclusion of our loan review, we also use the reporting portal. This is where we post um, all of our, our reports, kind of our summary reports. So we provide two types of reports, one which is our management report and one of which is a more condensed um, board level report. I'm going to just open this PDF, PDF and scroll through it so you can get a brief overview of, of what our manage, loan review management report looks like. Um, we provide um, information on the scope of the sample. We have a section on key observations and recommendations. We're going to discuss any risk grade changes, borrower underwriting, credit servicing that we observe. Um, after our recommendation sections, we've got a pretty robust uh, section with just detailed charts and graphs that show um, any, any, any movement, risk grade movement within your portfolio. And then for any credits that we have recommended grade changes before, you're going to be able to see those consolidated easily in one place and why we're recommending those changes. I um, don't want to go through the, the entirety of this report, but just want to point out that everything is going to live together. The individual loan write-ups will live together. The management report will live together. There'll never be, um, if you ever need to access something, this lives in the cloud in perpetuity. Whether we're doing an on-site loan review or we did one three months ago, you would be able to log on and see your bank's data. Um, finally, just talking about the last thing uh, that, that I wanted to highlight today, which is gonna make your life much easier, is this idea of real-time exceptions clearing. So as part of our loan review process, we have what's called the exceptions portal. We track exceptions across three types, legal doc exceptions, those would be missing um, guarantee agreements, or maybe we saw uh, an unrecorded deed of trust when we should have saw, saw, saw the recorded deed of trust. We track credit exceptions, so those are missing financials that should be in file based on your policy. And then we track loan policy exceptions. So if we see loans that are originated, maybe your bank's policy is minimum debt service coverage requirement of, of 125, but we see a loan that was originated at 1.16 debt service coverage, we are going to cite that as a policy exception. And then we're going to also indicate was that exception mitigated or approved. Um, this is what I wanted to show you though. The, and let's use legal doc exceptions as an example. If we are on site and we write up, for instance, this borrower, Aeneid Associates, we, we cited them for a missing guarantee agreement and said that it was critical in nature. As soon as we cite that exception, it will appear within this web-based portal that you have access to. Um, your credit team would be able to go, and let me delete this to show you how it works. Your credit team, maybe it's a loan officer, maybe it's somebody in loan ops, maybe it's you as the chief credit officer. If you, if you knew where this guarantee agreement was that we are citing as missing, you can easily click on this upload button um, go out on your server where the guarantee agreement is uploaded or located. You would click the upload button. Um, it's then when when files are uploaded, you can see over here that the status changes to pending, which tells me as a reviewer that I have an action item, something I need to do. Um, I can look and see who has uploaded what documentation and the time that they uploaded it. Um, as a reviewer, I can then go and view the file that was uploaded. So I can easily view the guarantee agreement. Once I'm satisfied that this guarantee agreement clears this exception, um, as a reviewer from this screen, I can just move this exception to cleared. And once a, uh, an exception is cleared, it jumps down to this cleared table. Um, so here's the exception that was just cleared. And this table above is just outstanding exceptions. So the same process is true, not for just for legal doc exceptions, but if we cite you again, um, this is a me and associates was cited for the bar was cited for missing um, a missing inspection. It looks like you could go upload the inspection. We could clear the exception, incorporate um, that document into our report, and it just makes for a much more um, fluid process. So again, um, the the key takeaways of the smart loan review are. Um, you're always going to have visibility into where we are with uh, the reporting. 
Um, you can, we're doing some aggregation on how many loans have been reviewed over the last 18 months. You can clearly see where we are in the loan review process, and you can easily access reports and exceptions reports in real time. Um, and then the other big, big takeaway is just this real time clearing of exceptions. The ability to, as you are cited for various exceptions throughout the loan review process, your team can get a head start on clearing those because those are, are housed within the self-contained portal. And as we um, cite exceptions, the bank will be able to view those. So I'm gonna turn this, uh, that was a tremendous amount in about 30 minutes. We love the opportunity to, to go more in depth. If, if anything has, has piqued your interest either on the analyzer side or on the loan review side, um, we'd be happy to set up a call with your financial institution and answer any questions specifically. But to round out the presentation, I'm going to turn it back over to, to David and he's going to take it from there. Thank you so much, Larry. I hope that you saw the bottom line for all of this is, is really practicality, uh, efficiency, and, and I'll close in a moment with affordability, all of which I think are critically important to ICBA bankers in this day and age. In very brief summary, the Portfolio Analyzer, I think, benefit to your team. It allows you to quantify emerging credit risk, allows you to drill down, identify those uh, borrowing hotspots, as we say it in our team, allows you to write your own script around what your uh, credit risk profile may be. Uh, it gives you the ability to perform querying or pivot tables or do your own uh, purview of your portfolio without uh, the aid of an expert data analyst, um, and it also has no limitations on bank users. For the smart loan review, it certainly gives you the ability to get the bank's loan detail and trends when updated. It hones a more informative, precise, risk-precise sampling. It chronicles on one uh, dashboard the history, frankly, of not only your loan reviews, but also your annual reviews in such a way that keeps that more of a vibrant process of your risk management as opposed to one typical point in time. Um, it does give that interface between the loan review and the portfolio analytics. And again, it gives, I think, that <clears throat> most important aspect of efficiency, transparency, and lack of intrusiveness that avoids, if you will, that so-called trip to the dentist relative to that. Um, as important, I think, is, is as happenstance was when we formed IntelliCredit, the interagency guidance was coming out in, in draft form. It got finalized uh, in May of 2020. That basically uh, gave a, a notice to our industry to be sure we buttress our credit risk review systems uh, to be sure they're effective. And uh, I think one of the things we're very proud of is that every aspect of that interagency guidance, of course, uh, is included in the IntelliCredit portal uh, and certainly within the smart loan review uh, aspect of that. Uh, again, we offer this in cloud-based form. Uh, it, it has a multitude of uses for you. We certainly do offer a loan review, again, as a service, uh, if that is, is desired as well. And, and in that, regard. I just wanted to thank you so much for attending today. Uh, we would love, again, to take advantage of you as an ICBA, ICBA member bank to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with you to allow you to see even more detail about what this uh, solution may benefit you. And I am as confident as I can be that the efficiencies, all of this, translate to lower fees for you on, 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 a, on both the analytic front and the loan review front. And to get to that, of course, uh, we need to be able to talk. We'd give anything to be able to at least uh, bid on your next loan review or for, to share with you uh, the relatively low cost of, of getting this up and running. And certainly not only just low cost, but the, the low burden on your staff to get you up and running on the IntelliCredit solution. Again, please reach out to me personally. Uh, my phone number is here. My email address is here. We would love to uh, set up a time where we could talk a little more specific uh, to your particular bank's uh, needs and interest level. But again, I do want to thank you so, so much for attending today's webinar uh, and 
stay well and uh, and and thanks again.